and they can identify who is in the picture. No matter where the picture is or where they were, they identify this must be this person. So what technology is unique to So even more advanced we can do is to distinguish the spectrum on the customer's faces when they look at products. They can say, ah, oh, this looks like they're interested in this product. Oh, they're because they're happy or satisfied with the product. And then they, instead of sending out surveys and asking if you like our product, they just take pictures of people and they usually identify what they like and what they do from them. So when I'm saying that there's no need to ask you, you don't need to have these focus groups anymore. Um, but you can actually use facial, facial patterns to measure the emotional response of the customer. And um, so as you're saying that um, uh, what you say is you like is no longer necessary and it's also no longer maybe as correct and true as what you express that you like. So if somebody says, oh, I really didn't like this product, and then there was something in their acceptance that they did, then they would more likely um, believe the, what the sensor has said rather than the person's response. And then uh, it says that this could be used in health, um, but also there could be some major quality you know, issues there that people uh, don't like that they're uh, not being asked. And then they're associated with them. So they might have to hide the fact that it's um, part of uh, if, 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 if it's identified with an individual, they might have to have to hide it. So these are some of the things that they found in 2016, and um, yeah. if you read the article, you get to the description of it. Okay, and then the last thing we have to do is that we put together in the second group. future technology for e-learning and then what are the effective technologies. So we just have to do with this um, um, teaching and learning and design. And I just put in this um, in the beginning uh, just to remind us of the three big seven notes. And these were the six steps in developing this effective technology. We said that uh, new effective technology is just the best in effective companies. Uh, marketing requests the feedback from customers to make those these forecasts for the for the old stuff. And then um, the static companies focus on the development of the existing technology. And then new companies are formed on the basis of the new technology. And new technology will develop and get better. And then the established companies they try to defend their market with use of the new technology. And the new kind of have foothold in the new market. So they see road to the existing market. And if you do not want to do a new market, now you can listen to this uh, video and search maybe this in some few thousands. But if you see some of the new uh, way to do it, and this is the same book that we have in the same setting. So um, you might want to look at this book. Um, and okay. um, so, yeah, basically, there's um, we can talk about some of the recent approaches for uh, e-learning and the uh, technologies that we use. And so some of the three main technologies are uh, massive online courses, like Zoom and Zoom. Uh, we use this kind of technology where you can put a lot of the material online and you can access that online. And then uh, social media. And you can imagine the e-learning platform and then uh, virtual reality platform. And the question are, are these types of technologies really um, effective or are they just extend, uh, extensions of this sustained approach 
maybe they're not uh, really enough to be trusted. And the, the question is, uh, I mean, we have all providers of the education, that the colleges and universities, and we have potential new and potential education markets. So this could be private educators, uh, personal trainers, anyone that's kind of teaching uh, the ability to learn by yourself and to be specialized in the university. We have this formal education institution, and we have new ways of new markets for people the opportunity to earn money and teaching. And they teach their special skills and musical skills for uh, four weeks or whatever you need to get this new It doesn't have to be part of a, a formal education program. There's a lot of opportunities for that in the inside. Um, so you might have to think in the market. What technology can you use in this new market? So, in all of these other uh, technologies that we need to use in the market, they may also be used in some of the new markets, but there may be others as well. And so, just to uh, cover what we see in terms of what we need to buy from, we have to know the exception of the market. And uh, what you get is when you can put something, you get into the video, you can get into it on the uh, and uh, so when you go to the simple case, you don't have to log on to something. So you get the first and third to log on something through the system. That's how I have it set up. And then we see some examples um, of articles about female dance research. Uh, people professionals can take part of their education by using the platform. And that's in the same way. The people can be different. Students they can be different places and different students. So, uh, much of the material for the course. Uh, the link says the, the negative side is going to be a lot of social interaction. And that um, you learn by doing and not by just watching. So if you're just watching a video or recording of this, then that's not really being active. You're just doing a practical program. You don't have a chance to ask questions or things like that. These are some of the negative sides of using this type of platform by itself. And then there's visual limitations of recording. When you just stream the size of tablets are larger to be able to see what's on the slide. But the other, I don't know how it is to try to do this on the virtual and the screen is very difficult in some cases. This is another thing I have to do with the phone. I'm the board and then I have to put that on. Um, so anyway, um, there's also some limitations, but it's a new technology and being able to use it. And then the social media on um, the feed on the platform. Uh, this is a uh, different type of social media like YouTube, which is also being used in the mobile app. And then there's some um, Facebook and other types of social media and so that can a research that many institutions get to survey, they find out that uh, most higher education institutions, colleges and universities, uh, use uh, social media for uh, teaching, for professional use, and for social media. And then, um, various of options are uh, in the integrity of the students' submission, so I can see that they are. Uh, when somebody delivers something, it's really from them. And then uh, in terms of privacy, and then separate spaces and personal accounts, and uh, these are like the first of things that could be with the top So, social media is being used in education, but it's not like, um, uh, it's not for the standard, it's not protected, but it's common that it's being used. And um, since these are the same, the same market. And then the uh, virtual reality technology issues have not been used to great extent in education because uh, very specialized stuff. We have interfaces and uh, people have not been investing so much in them yet. So maybe uh, we take the here from second row to get the top in media. But uh, it allows for different types of teaching. So it allows the uh, students to be able to uh, become active uh, learners and to 
group and asking the post for you to uh, interact with your group post space instead of just watching the video when you put up for the group. Um, move around and um, just by being in physical proximity. So being able to interact quickly for the better in both the space. And then uh, you, you can simulate real life situations that may be difficult to do in the classroom. So if you want to replicate a courtroom setting, you can replicate that if you want to um, replicate a business boardroom, you can have a space in the business boardroom. And you can do this more easily in the setting, but you can't do that in the classroom. So you can become the user. And then uh, you can also um, use them that may be more uh, motivating uh, ways of learning. So there's good reasons. And then the, there are different types of things that virtual worlds and virtual reality technologies have been used for uh, in, in learning. So we do it in world quality, just representations, information sharing, simulations, uh, museums, um, performances, there's a lot of different types of uses for the technology. Um, and then uh, an example of like this would be the use of second life for continuous dating tools. And in this case, the students could get information to what they need to do in the virtual world. They can talk to each other in the virtual world to do calculus. They can ask the teacher questions and he can answer them. They could have a recording of what went on in the virtual so they could save the chat and understand what they were on. And then they could also upload their own presentation and do their own presentation in the virtual world. So it's a very um, supportive environment. Uh, but uh, it's on the desktop. And some people uh, will need to learn how to use this. And there's some need to uh, have the institution support this and uh, have the incentives to go into the right place in the first place. So it's all optimal and protect the institution. But anyway, that's uh, one way, and um, it has been somewhat adopted, not widely adopted, but there a lot of instances of people using it. Another type of extent. You know, extension of existing uh, capabilities in desktop virtual world. Uh, we have another um, virtual world. This is not such a nice. This one is called Zoom Academia. It's developed by some researchers in NASA. And it does a lot of the same things as such a nice thing. So you can chat, you can speak to each other, and you can create simulations of different places. And you can uh, dress up your costume or whatever. But uh, another capability that they added on is that you can make recordings of what happens in the user space, and then you can replay the recording. And then you can uh, save the lesson, and then you can actually insert more changes to the lesson at the time. So it's like a database, it's like a single database. Instead of um, you have a record in a 2D database, so you could change. I do account by every six months to my balance and I have this much money. So you can see the history of your changes and you can see the new values. So I don't know, 2D recording, you could say, I was putting enough there uh, for this lesson and then you can uh, record the whole lesson and then you can come back and look at the lesson and say, I want to insert something else. And then you insert another time slot where I was sitting in another chair and saying something. So you can actually build on to a system and you can change the system. And another thing is, um, yeah, so they're, they're actually trying to improve this uh, or make more capabilities for it just on the desktop and more screen and you can see the screen and turn it into the phone. And you show people with them more and more. Um, and then uh, the 3D table environment is used for um, uh, like the teaching social behavior in some kinds of situations. No believable uh, if the 
can want to be um, paid for a person standing and they can on the um, by the walls, by the uh, marshal and state, and you're in creepy glasses, and then it seems like it's really real. It becomes inside. The problem with this is that it's very expensive. Not everybody has one of these. So, I mean, you have to bring people to the place to be able to try it out. So, you don't know why this is an expensive question. But the way you can see some cheese and blood, uh, they price it on different pieces. And again, being able to do it in a cave environment, which is an increase in the best environment in terms of emotion. Uh, it's also not so acceptable. So there's a potential new market here for being able to become more immersed in the cave environment and doing it so that everybody can have a potential market here. So, what are some of the possible and a disruptive technology for you and me. And I think it's uh, overlapping and combination in different things like augmented reality, mobile technology, and virtual reality. Uh, mobile learning, you can you can also send one out from the iPhone, for example. And you can use these for purposes like self computing and self learning. And think about this. Um, um, the fact for the kids being able to monitor the child when you can take on your phone. And uh, the thing is, like I have uh, an app for playing my music. And I have tried it out. It's certain this is the uh, whole thing. And I think I did four lessons. And so four lessons are expensive. <laughs> and the reason for me is because the uh, you put some down. You don't have any of these assets except this, this um, application. And this will tell you, they send you reminders and they send fearful responses and you may say, yeah, it's a it keep going. And you know, I had a board team in a few days and you're still with us and things like this. But um, uh, still, you can turn around and when you could then interact in a social setting. Uh, like you can post things on Facebook. Uh, you can challenge the sun, uh, but it's not the same as real time interaction. Uh, then there's um, another technology, augmented reality. It also works with the app. And I have um, an app on my phone that tells you um, how high the mountains are. And you can uh, in the area. So I just point it and it tells me. Uh, and then there's other kinds of apps that do this for you can point your phone at the stars and you can the constellation you can uh, uh, but what can you be used for? They can be used for a uh, plastic so you can combine the augmented uh, reality and the application on your phone and say in a standalone application you can interact with us so everybody can go out walking on the trip and the teacher can say, okay, what mountain are you can out? And everybody can hold up and say, oh, let's see what mountain are you Or the teacher can send them to you. And then uh, you could have the, um, you know, other kinds of uh, trips to get out of reality. So you could in uh, a social writing place. And you could point to uh, the mound and then you say, uh, I do with a house that is on top of this ground and this is what it looks like. And so you can uh, use this as uh, information for teaching, but also interacting with the uh, Another uh, new advancement uh, mobile technology, and this has to do with the sensors and these two devices, is that uh, they have Google Maps, Google Glass, where you can have this is an Google Glass, and uh, you don't have to do it with a thin hand. And a little tiny screen here. And so you look through the corner of the and this gives you some glasses, and this is what you see. So you see this like an environment, and up on the side is a little information screen. And this is asking, I want to read some kind of news. Uh, you could also uh, ask about what location am I in, and um, how do I get directions to another place. 
we can talk to somebody on Facebook, and can talk to them now, and we always discuss what we can now do with that. And you can take pictures of your surroundings. So you could say, you know, you do this for something. I forget. So you can take pictures. But um, uh, some of these things that you start to turn up on food pottery lights, uh, these privacy issues, and if people don't like it, then maybe when they're speaking with somebody, they can record it. <laughs> and then um, uh, they say that um, they will introduce to you that there's a lot of social media hype. So they say somebody can have a video of somebody walking around and doing all kinds of things and you can see them how possible with these classes. They don't do as much as they can and they can do. And uh, this guy, he, um, he actually um, uh, has a video where he walks around and he's doing tech stuff. So you can see what he can do. This is, um, he posted a small screen post that the file would be very hard to see and then process it with the actual content on the screen. He says that in a big, you know, simple sort of video, we want to create a level of overhype and make it mistaken that the product is possible to do that. Um, we have enough time, I'm going to see if I can just play the video. Thank you. 
also takes some super early wide frame division rather than other types of frames. So you can everything within one um, frame and uh, it really picks them up from information that it takes to come into uh, thinking. Uh, it doesn't uh, lose the strength of the world in the way it takes in and has a high resolution, so it's become very immersive. And you can look at this from um, the Brennan field, and the one that has the lower case, and people become very um, motion sick because it's so realistic. It's very realistic. So it's like having the shading element on the desktop instead of just looking at uh, like a nice curve through your screen. You look at something in the 3D virtual world, 3D structures, and it looks like you're surrounded by the 3D virtual world. And then there's a uh, more for me, there's just a um, high advice for um, um, being able to work in the 3D with the background um, and to work in the environment instead of just thinking you have to do something different. And you can use this in my book. Simulation training, emergency um, evacuation, and it could be used for education work and things like that. Thank you. 